Five months ago, I got my first pop. So let's review it. What's up everybody, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mike. I'm an internal medicine physician and I've been a type one diabetic for 27 years. And yes, I finally got my first pump. Before we jump into the review, I wanna let you know that I'm not getting any money from these guys or anybody else. They didn't contact me to do a review. This is an honest review. I have a bunch of notes in front of me that I'm just gonna go off of. Nobody's called me for anything. These are my genuine thoughts. So this is the Tandem T-Slim Mark II or X2 or something too, I don't know. This pump holds about 250 units of insulin and it's actually pretty small, smaller than I was expecting considering the first pump in the 60s was a giant backpack. I have my GoPro here for comparison. If you know how big a GoPro is, this will help. If you don't, mm, lower. So it's about the same size and it's a little bit more than half the thickness of a GoPro. So not that big. I will say I used to see a lot of diabetes memes talk about the tube. I will never look at a doorknob the same way. Since getting this, I have caught myself on the doorknob all the time and I get mad at it, just like everybody else does. And now I've become part of that meme culture. I'm grateful to be a part of that family, but I also kind of hate it. The suggested use of each site on this pump is three days, but there's an alarm that you can kind of shut off if you still have a bunch of insulin left and you don't want to waste it. This pump also allows you to set different basal and bolus rates for different times of day. I don't know if there's a limit on how many different ones you can set up. I personally have four. I know I'm much more insulin resistant and I need much more insulin in the morning than in the evening. So I have a bunch of things set up and then I have a separate one for overnight and midday and all sorts of things. There are two big modes on this pump that I use all the time. Automatically, it goes to sleep mode when you tell it you're going to sleep. And that happens just once. You can tell the pump about when you go to bed and about when you wake up, and then it'll just kind of set it from there. You can also set it to exercise mode, so it's a little bit less liberal about giving you insulin. Now, the thing that really sold me on getting this pump was that it's a closed loop system with Dexcom that aims for a blood sugar of 110. I thought, this is gonna be awesome. So here's the actual review. Here's what I like about it. First thing, far fewer hypoglycemic events. When I did MDIs, I used to get really bad hypos all the time. I was gonna aim for an A1C around five. No, too many hypoglycemic events. What this pump will actually do is understand how many units of insulin you have on board and then stop giving you your basal rate long before you actually go low. Huge perk, huge benefit. I think this is probably gonna save a lot of people in the future. Probably the most obvious benefit to getting a pump over shots is no more shots. I used to take about 10 shots every day and I have to replace this every three days. I will say this hurts a little bit more than the shots do, but the shots didn't really hurt that bad. So, you know, one of these every three days versus 30 shots every three days, I think this gets the win. And I will say it's pretty easy to change sights on this. There's a whole process that the pump actually takes you through. It's pretty simple. It's not that hard. It's not that stressful. The pump itself is also fairly easy to use. All the menus are fairly intuitive and the Tandem crew has great support both online and over the phone. You shouldn't be confused for very long before getting your answer. The last thing that was a very pleasant surprise here is the battery life. This battery lasts like four days. I haven't plugged it in for two days and I know I didn't get to 100% battery and it's at 55% right now. Now, of course it depends on how often you bolus, how much time the screen is on, all sorts of things, but it lasts about four days. So that's actually really nice to have. All right, enough with the positive stuff. Here's what I don't like about this pump. My big one is I wish it was more aggressive about corrections. It tells you that it aims for a blood sugar of 110. Now, if I go to bed at 150, knowing my blood sugar has been stable for a while, I would expect to wake up at 110. I usually wake up at 150. I wish it was a little bit more aggressive there because if I'm gonna spend seven or eight hours in bed, I want my sugar to be great for seven or eight hours. I'm not going anywhere, I'm not eating anything. Be a little bit more aggressive there. I guess the trade-off there is, well, what if it gives you too much and you're asleep and you don't wake up for the hypoglycemic event and you could die? Yeah, I get it, but you know, there's some fine line that we're not quite up to just yet, in my opinion. So I wish it was just a little bit more aggressive. Something else that I don't love about this is the touchscreen is nice, but it could use a little bit of work. Sometimes it'll randomly shut off when I'm bolusing, and sometimes when I wake up the actual device, it'll be in some random screen. So I'm just assuming that I'm pocket dialing it somehow. Nothing bad has happened, but it's a little disconcerting. So, you know, I wish the touchscreen was a little bit better. It's certainly not as good as on your phone. One more thing that I should mention, and I'm not sure if this is a me thing or a pump thing, but I have noticed that the pump kind of stops working when it reaches 50 units left in the cartridge. For example, I could be out somewhere with 50 units left here and my total daily insulin hovers around 50 units a day. So three or four hours should be no problem for 50 units. 
but I'll give myself a bolus to correct and my sugar will continue to go up. That gets really aggravating as you might imagine. So again, not sure if this is a me thing or a pump thing, but something I figure I should mention if you're thinking about getting this pump or maybe you've had the same experience and if you have, let me know because I would like to know if it's a me thing or a pump thing. So what does that mean for me? Am I gonna go back to shots? No. It seems like the pros and cons list has about an even number of things in it, but the pros certainly outweigh the cons. I mean, this has been great. I think the far fewer hypos are much more important than being a little bit more aggressive overnight. It still annoys me that it's not as aggressive as I would like it to be, but I can probably figure my way around that. It does annoy me that it's not as aggressive as it probably could be and you can't change where the gold blood sugar is. If I could change it to 100 or 95, that would make me feel a little bit better. But it's at 110 or else the control IQ, the closed loop system just won't work. I will say the onus is on all of us to appropriately carb count and bolus. Sometimes that's been my problem and I've always known when it is my problem because eh, 27 years and I'm still not the ideal diabetic. I don't think anybody is, but you know, it's a goal that we'll never get. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Let me know down below in the comments what insulin you use. Are you an MDI person? Are you a pump person? Do you use this pump? Have you used it forever? Or are you considered getting it? I wanna know. I wanna connect with you guys a little bit better. It's tough for me to connect with the type one diabetic community in my own clinic, because I don't see a ton of type ones. So this is my best way to do it. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time.